So today I wanted to give you some insight into how covered calls work, how you can use them to make money on stocks you already own using an example from my trading account that I recently closed up for profit in only a few days. For this example, we're looking at the stock AMD here on the screen in trading, use some technical analysis and rationale behind why I chose to do what I did on this stock. I own 100 shares with an average price of around 140, okay? Which means that at this level right here, if the stock gets back to 140, I'm profitable. And on this trading day, it was trading up at 147. So I could have sold my shares outright and netted like 700 bucks in profit. But what I decided to do instead was sell a covered call. Why? Because I want to hold my AMD stocks for a little bit longer and I'm going to get paid a little bit of money in this contract. And I'll show you how much I got ended up getting paid to sell this call contract, this call option contract, which just kind of juices up my return for my portfolio. I was okay with selling it at the 160 price level. So way up here to make this the red area. And this is my limit. That's where I sold my covered call at. So what I decided to do was say, if I'm going to get this covered call, I want to get paid like 200 bucks in premium. Okay. That's what I got paid to sell this covered call. And my expiration date was all the way over here, January 26th. So right about here. Okay. Let me make that blue. So what I was saying is that if AMD's price right over here, like two weeks, three weeks away, it gets up to 160. I'm going to sell the shares for 160. I'm going to get paid 200 bucks to do so. And then I make that extra premium because I bought at 140, sell at 160. It's about $2,000 in profit. I'm okay with that as we go through this exercise. If the price of AMD does not hit this 160 level, I don't sweat it at all. I say, hey, thank you very much for paying me 200 bucks up here to take this premium and just take that and go. I hold on to my shares of AMD. I turn around and sell potentially another covered call option. Now, what ended up happening here and why I did this was because I can see here AMD has been on a ripper lately and it's made some new all time highs relative to where it was in the past <clears throat> little bit. Okay, it has been higher before up to the 165 level, but it also peaked up here at 160 going back. This is December of 2021. So we're two years away. Okay. And if I was to come over here and say, hey, where is this likely to go? Okay, we had a really, really bullish moving up here and up again and one more time. We're getting pretty far and pretty extended from this nine day EMA, this moving average, and even further from the 21 day moving average. So when these gaps start to appear, it's a good sign that there may be some kind of weakening in the market. And even though there was some increased volume, it was still relatively low to what had happened and pushed this kind of run higher through the first half of December. And also seasonality wise, there's a bit of a lull to kind of kickstart the year just with trading kind of being paused throughout the end of December, a couple of days off for vacation for New Year's and Christmas. So I'm thinking that if it tops out here and it showed a little bit of resistance up here on the 29th of December, the last trading day of 2023, I said, hey, it was almost the same volume negatively selling wise on this candlestick. We tried to go higher. We couldn't do it kind of one, two days in a row with those wicks up there, right? If you look at the wicks on these candles. There is some kind of pressure to go higher. 150 couldn't get there. Again, 150, 151 couldn't get there, got brought back down. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe this drops lower. And if it does drop lower, that's good for me. When I sell my covered call, I make money more quickly if the stock price does drop lower. So what happened? Well, you also have faded decay working when you're selling call options or covered calls, which means just time decay is working. So every day that ticks by, the contract loses a little bit of value. So I sold this contract again for 200 bucks. And the next day, if I just go ahead and play this, Boom, we have this next day, which is kind of currently where we're trading at right now on this trading day, a big candlestick movement down. Did I know this was gonna happen? No, absolutely not. I did not know this. I had a premonition, not really. I just thought maybe this is some weakness here and I ended up getting it right. Again, if I got it wrong and the stock price moved up into this direction, I was totally okay. Cause again, I got paid that 200 bones and I'm okay selling my shares here at 160 for a nice profit again of 2000 bucks plus the premium of that $200. So it'd be like 2200 bucks of profit. But since the stock went downwards, we're now at the 137 level. This is okay for me because what happens is I'm able to close out my covered call contract very, very quickly. Instead of waiting all the way till expiration on the 26th of January and banking a full $200, what I ended up doing was this. I was able to come in here and buy back my position and realize a profit of $138 in one, technically one trading day, which means I locked in this 138 in one trading day because the market and this AMD stock price went downwards. Four real days and kind of like the calendar days in the course of the actual year with a couple holidays in there. And so if I'm able to make $138 in one trading day, that means I left some money on the table because remember I got paid $200 up front. So I ended up give some back. 
we do the math here, go 200 minus 138 equals $62. That's how much cash I gave up to close off this trade and now not have to sell my shares. I can sit back and wait for another kind of rip in the market up or higher, and I can go ahead and sell another covered call. But I gave away $62 and I kept 138. Why would I do this? Like, why does that make sense? Why wouldn't I just wait for the whole kind of expiration date here in January? Well, if you look at your potential kind of return, if the market kind of does bounce back up to this level here around 150 and change, maybe it gets back up here and then kind of tops it again in that area again, I'd look to sell another covered call on AMD and just say, hey, it got there once, it couldn't break through. Maybe I can make another 138 in one trading day. If you keep doing those types of trades, you make money quickly in like one or two trading days, it makes it a lot better for your overall returns versus waiting another whole kind of calendar here all the way to this deadline right here for the contract to expire on the 26th of January. I'd have to wait literally 24 more days just to get $62. That's like $2 per day, roughly. That's just over $2 per day, okay? I just made $138 in one trading day, technically. So why would I wait all this time for $62 when I can just close this trade off, take the risk off, keep my shares, wait for the market to kind of rebound and do the trade over and over again? Now, there's no guarantee that the market's gonna respond the way that I need it to, to kind of make this trade happen over and over and over and over again. But in a perfect world, when I'm looking at the data in real time, these are the decisions that I'm making in my own trading account and saying, hey, if I do this, I get a better return overall if versus waiting. That I can make money quickly in the stock market versus having to wait long term. I'm always going to do that because we don't know what the stock market's going to do. I don't know. You don't know. The experts at MSN and CNBC and BNN and on TV don't know. David Ramsey doesn't know. Warren Buffett doesn't know. Everybody is just playing the odds and trying to tilt them more in their favor. But what you can use covered calls for, again, is to kind of juice up the returns by selling contracts, covered call contracts, on stock you already own in your account. If you have 100 shares in your stock account, you can sell covered calls just like this and make a little bit of extra premium that will hopefully magnify your gains long term. The worst case being you have to sell the stock at that strike price that you agreed to sell it at. So always make sure, quick tip here for you, that you set that strike price at the very least at the price that you paid to buy the shares at in the beginning. If you bought shares of AMD for 120, make sure your strike price on your cover call is 120 or greater. If you bought Apple shares at 180, make sure the strike price is 180 or above on your covered call when you're selling that contract. The list goes on and on. The examples are the same. You can use covered calls, make a little bit more income for yourself in your trading portfolio. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel for more and keep watching. I'll see you on the next one.